I'm David Anderson. Uh, I run the TimexSinclair.com website. And today we are recording another episode of Timex Connection with Joao Ramos. Hi, David. Nice to be here again. Uh, <laughs> third episode. So lots and lots of things to, to keep exploring. I know we've we've really it feels like we've only scratched the surface with with the stuff about the fifteen hundred and and that's probably literally the truth. <laughs> yeah, the question is, is it a good thing or a bad thing? But let's <laughs> let's see. There's there's plenty to look for, so we can easily adjust whenever the the moment comes to to look for for other things. But for now, fifteen hundred it is. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's dive in. Last uh, last episode, we were talking about the communication between uh, the American uh, Timex in Connecticut and Timex in Portugal around the 1500. And one of the things that we discovered was that the proposal for the case and the soft keyboard all came from Portugal, which was, you know, an amazing discovery to me. And um, I think that there's probably other things that you know are are just as interesting, uh, you know, for us to still discover. Yeah, it, it was an amazing discovery, not only for you because I, even though I had the the paperwork, the fact is that I didn't read them with all the attention. That's one of the intentions of this uh, Timex Connection program. So, and uh, like I always say to people in the museum, after that moment, whenever we are discussing something where this makes sense, now I have another thing to 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 explain, uh, and that we have evidence for uh, knowing that there were other things where we we saw the opposite where things were much driven from the from the us so here it's not a matter of uh, who's doing more uh, th we will be talking about a competition a certain competition between the teams at a certain <laughs> moment but um, our intention 40 years after is not is not that one but it's to learn to understand to yeah. to know better what happened and i think that's what drives us here uh be before we go back to the paperwork um mm -hmm. i think it's always nice to to show some physical stuff so uh, this weekend i um, when we are recording but so recently i i i took to the museum the remaining of the things that I had at home from the from the Spectrum Timex and and all of that from the collection, uh, I I can probably imagine that the happiest person in the world is my wife, <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I'm also happy because it's tough to manage things that are split in several places. And whenever we need something, it's very hard even for me to remember many of the details. So I did that. And one of the things I had here was a, a box with something like 30 spectrums that have been repaired over time. And um, and now we're going to be composite mod and prepared to be using the in the museum activities because I, I can share this. So we organized recently a, a festival, a gaming festival here called Street Gaming. Uh, not only Spectrum, okay? I, I, saw, and, that, I uh, saw that on Facebook. A lot of activity. Yeah, looked really cool. It, it was a huge success. It's exciting to see the happiness in the face of, of, of everyone. Because when you start going also for the, let's say, consoles, arcades, and things like that, then you you have a, a wider population that uh, that is... Uh, um affected by what you're doing so it, it, there were very very special moments uh about that and it's something i i want to keep doing in the future because it's also a strategy and i'm very honest about it uh, it's a strategy to generate money uh, revenue to reinvest in the museum because a okay. museum is a museum absorbs money doesn't generate money uh even <laughs> yeah. more hours where we don't <laughs> charge a ticket okay <laughs> So we need to be clever. And what I always think is there must, so a museum won't generate money, but the collection should be able to do it somehow. And so that was one part of a strategy to, to achieve that, uh, always with the intention of reinvesting the museum, not taking out any money, but th that was part of it. And so the funny thing is why we were setting up the retro gaming area, uh, and, and people always say, oh, I know someone that has lots of spectrums and timex and things like that, referring to me. And you can't imagine how hard it was to get the spectrum composite mod ready to use because 
no one wanted to use a clone uh, with an SD card and things like that. So we wanted to use an original one. And the fact is I was struggling to find one and we had to change the membrane just in the day before the event and all that. So right now I'm, I'm taking care of that to avoid problems in, in, in next time. And so what I found in that box, and so this one stayed at my house where I'm recording, um, was this computer. <laughs> so, uh, very bad condition faceplate, uh, kind of a black TS-1500 case, which yeah. is common here. I'll, I'll yeah. tell you about it. And then the sticker. And now I know that there are more than one version of the stickers because you have uh, the study for those. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, and so saying Timex Sinclair 1500. Now, there's nothing special in the computer. I, I don't remember the issue of the board. Uh, I don't have it written here. It came, I'm looking uh, underneath. To, I have a sticker with what are the, the problems he had. And then I had this code that tells me where he came from. It came from Eric Susan. I mentioned the name oh. before. Eric Susan was the kind of the design guy from Timex Portugal, uh, which makes sense because they were playing with this. So they were playing with the with the computer. So yes. Well, I'm I'm not that familiar with spectrums. Okay. But the 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 grill pattern, that's yes. It's not typical from here. Okay. So there are two places where you see the grill pattern. Uh one in the um, in the 1500 which uh -huh. used this case precisely this one but in silver okay? okay and i'll explain you why this exists because i i i don't have an evidence but i have a, a testimony from someone saying what happened and okay. I, I think it makes sense uh and the other place where something similar to this appeared was in one i don't know where the picture came from but some uh, advertisement or picture from a prototype of the ts 2000 in us yeah, so it had some grill, but then it had something different here in the well, end. Yeah, on the on the right hand side, you know, yeah. looking at the pictures, it was it's really hard to tell, but it looks like you know three, I think three dots, three, three squares, like, yeah, so. red, green, blue squares. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. So those are the two places. So when we start, so the first time I saw a computer like this, even saying that expert in Portugal. We start thinking, whoa, holy grail, we have the <laughs> we have a prototype of the TS 2000 or something. And I can even say this, and I'm not saying it in a, in a bad in, with a bad intention, but the guys in the Cambridge Museum in UK, they call this uh, a prototype. Mm. And when I visited, I had a, a chat with them and I explained them and they immediately uh, corrected it. So they were very... Um, eager to discuss and learn and, and all of that because I told them guys if this is a prototype I have at least seven or eight at my house mm -hmm. why so what's the story of the computer saying ZX Spectrum in this black case that looks like the 1500 um, a few years after this case in this color was used in the computer sent to Argentina okay. but that happened later okay. and using Issue six boards, uh, issue four, but mostly issue six boards for Serbeni, which is, uh, yeah, uh, they, they say Serbeni, Cezerni in English would be something like that. Yes. Um, so that that's something that happened later. But way before that, in Portugal, we started finding over here computers like these things at X Spectrum, but using an issue two or issue three board. Okay. We only found them in Portugal, and my friend Mark Kusterman bought one in Spain, but certainly was imported from Portugal. Okay. And uh, the, when I when I addressed this with Luis Bandeira, which was one of the top guys in Timex Portugal, he gave me an explanation from this, and he said, "Look, it's nothing special. <laughs> what must have happened is that there was some issue with the um, what's the the um, the name in uh, in English for." The mold. There was an issue with the mold, the okay. spectrum mold, because they were making cases over here. And that's another thing that no one thinks about. Even yeah. the rubber keys, they were being produced also here. But no one thinks about that. No one assumes that was a possibility. But the fact is that it was. Uh, and so they had the molds to create the, the cases, but they had some issue with the main mold. And so they what he told me was, for sure, we just rang Sinclair and said, Sinclair Research, and said, 
we need to do a batch of computers with a similar case, but slightly different. It's for the Portuguese market. Is there an issue? And the Portuguese market didn't matter. <laughs> it was mm. too small. So no one cared about that. And so the fact is that there are a few hundreds of machines like this in Portugal, but saying that spectrum. There are two versions of the sticker. One with the, this um, uh, rectangle around yeah. it yeah. and another one without it, but saying Sinclair ZX Spectrum, not Timex Sinclair, anything like that. I'll be darned. Regarding this specific one, I don't have any further information. Uh, it comes from the right guy that would be playing with the 1500 in terms of cosmetic. Mm -hmm. uh, so it makes some sense that they applied this here. Uh, but then this ended up with a, a Spectrum board inside. Okay, so um, Gary uh, Grimes. Gary Grimes, yes. Yeah. Um, talked to us, I feel like two years ago or so, about the design work that he did for the 2068, right? And that pattern is repeated on the 2068. And my, uh, you know, my assumption was that, that, um, you know, he also did that on the 1500, but, you know, based on this, it looks like, you know, these cases were shipped to, um, to, to Connecticut and, yeah, from... you know, and, and certainly used in those promo photos, right. That we've, yeah. we're pretty familiar with. Um, <clears throat> and that, you know, obviously Gary had access to that and took, you know, took clearly took a cue from this, you know, this grill. But Gary did it for the 2068, not the TS2000 concept, right? I, I know TS2000 was a name that eventually became the 2068. So his his designs look nothing like this. Yeah. It, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think he picked up on that, that grill. But, and... but he could have picked up the grill from the 1500, which was already on the portfolio. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, that, 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 but, but they had these cases in, um, you know, they had to have the cases in hand in, say, December in order to get the press releases out to yeah. the magazines. And several of those magazines had lead times, you know, of a couple months. And the fact is, the first document we have about the 1500 the year in this set, there, there could be, there could have been others before, of course, but it's December 82. So yeah. it seems like there was wow. something already going on before because you are right. The, the computer is from, so the 2068 is from the beginning of 83. So, yeah. And so um, you guys were, you had a, a, you know, I don't know what the word is, a, a pressing plant or whatever to, to make the, the make, cases. Yeah. Portugal, Portugal has a lot of, um, of uh, tradition in injection molding and things That's like it. that. Okay. Yeah. So um, they, but it's, it was not in-house. It was okay. outside. But so there's a region of Portugal that is very famous just because of that. Huh. Uh, so I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm pretty sure. No, for example, for the, uh, I know where they did it. I have the, <laughs> I have a very nice thing I found once in a, in a, in a um, warehouse. So I found a box with the, the cases for the TT3000, which is the CPM keyboard, more yeah. than a keyboard, but that. So okay. I found the box just with the cases and the oh. box had a sticker from the quality control of the place that produced them. Made them. Um, Sevi Farg, I think it was the name. And I have that on display in the museum because I thought it was an amazing um, detail showing where they were producing them. And then yeah. I confirmed with the people at Time Export. Wow, that's really amazing. Okay, so this cool. was just the, the teaser. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> so if we want, we can find many shapes for the 1500, although we know which one is the, the one that ended up being uh, mass produced. Yeah. Um, regarding the documentation and where we were, if you allow me, I'll share the screen. Yeah, go ahead. Here we have our... Um, Excel file with yeah. the, the documents, the yeah. main contents. So there were some misclassifications of documents from May 82 that ended up being changed to May 83. Uh, we didn't evolve much in terms of documents before, but I'm not concerned with that. We did do 
several things from February 83. That's where we were. Yeah. We, we we saw what you were referring about the case and the keyboard. We, we will go there. Yeah. Um, but we didn't conclude February. And so I suggest we look at February and we go through the documents and uh, the ones we saw before we, we yeah. skip and take it from there. So let's open them. <laughs> Okay, um, at Tiransky, Antonio Gomes, February 11. Oh, this is the one. So this is the one precisely saying yeah. what we were Talking kind of about. summing up from the previous episode, yep. which is the Portuguese team on their own initiative came up with a potential product. And one thing they highlight is the fact that it reuses inventory, which is something that was very, very, very important to Timex. Right. Um and it was cheaper than the existing 1016. Uh, and we had a discussion about the TVs in black and white and, uh, <laughs> and all of that, you and I, but I think we can we can move on if you agree. Then this was some this was the mix of documents. There's a yeah. Oh, this was about the ROM changes. Uh the problem they had about having an external ROM, if I'm if I remember well. Mm -hmm. Um and so they were looking at what needed to be done. So we saw this one also. Right. Now we have some uh, uh, Paternostos uh, document and written. Uh, it's about the power supply. Yeah. Yeah. Tom so Belpasso and Kim Paternostro, you, you mentioned her. Yeah. Um, so we saw this one also. This is about the um, the one amp. Oh my gosh! The voltage uh, and current um, yeah. conditions in the power supply. Then eleven February eleven again. Ah uh, yes. yes. Okay, yes. and now they are talking about issues with the um, SCLD. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And CR and here is the famous three week. Uh, period iteration <laughs> yeah right okay i think we saw this one also do you agree yeah. okay yeah, so let's go on cassette tape interface to ts 1500 and ts 2000 somebody, somebody named patrick okay um d patrick named tom name. belpasso yoder and jay white okay yeah. i don't recognize the names um, the Mika put okay, the voltage that you should have <laughs> dumbbell pass for re recorder car recall. No, or I don't know what it is. Looks like, yeah, it looks like it might say recorder. So, recorder, uh, okay. So, I want to scroll back to the, the text of the memo. I like the part where it says, you know, that I've done this work and it's necessary that we establish firm specifications since I committed myself in a memo. <laughs> so I'm already screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Please help me out. With this. <laughs> yeah, it happens. <laughs> uh, then yeah, the, on the February 17. Yeah. Uh, okay. Tumble Passu, Distribution Shang, Lee, Owen, Tassir, French, Kosh. Those are all new names to me. I don't know. The Vito? Well, uh, the Vito appears before our, yeah, no, the, the, before the, the other, one. the other ones, they don't appear much. Yeah. And this oh, is a very that. technical thing. Theory of operation, IC oh. evaluation, schematic changes, specification changes, PCV schematic changes. Let's, oh, it's just the agenda. This is the, but could you imagine being, you know, being able to sit in on that meeting? That they didn't record hard. it on Zoom. <laughs> Yeah. It would be nice to have the notes from this one. I don't know if we have or not, but it's yeah, February it's... 17. Let's see what what in, what comes up more. Or if you happen to find one of these guys. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I would love to understand more about these PCV schematic changes because of the 1000. Because so this is a well, few days after the thing from Portugal. Yeah. So it was on the 11th, I believe. So well, and, and the, you know, that that uh, that very early um prototype that you showed yeah you know was it was just a sort of it was a, a 1000 or you know a in silver tx81 issue three but just extended with you know space for the ram chips underneath yep. the keyboard and so the the schematic changes had to have been huge 
Yeah. So by the way, I did fire up, I did power on the um, the TS one thousand, the TS fifteen hundred in well, so the TS one thousand silver case that yeah. had a sticker saying TS fifteen hundred. Uh, I did power it up; it's working. Uh, I checked the memory and all of that, and it's a normal TS one thousand. So we don't have there any. I don't. We don't even know. Well, I'm sure they had some prototypes of the fifteen hundred in that uh, format. Uh, yeah. I don't think I have any. I I never saw one. Or if I saw it, I didn't notice what it was. So I need to pay more attention. Uh, but let's see. Okay, going on. Okay, so this is a hardware man. Okay. TS fifteen hundred product specification draft from the day before of they, this whoa. meeting. Yeah. Okay. By Kim Paternoster. This document specifies the second generation upgrade. Second oh generation upgrade of Timex Sinclair one thousand applicable document. This one is a big document, so let's see. Oh, good, because because there's schematic also drawings, parts yeah. list, integrated circuit, quality control procedure. Oh my gosh! Okay, <laughs> this one is exciting. Yeah, palpitations. <laughs> Various improvement as itemized in section three zero one dot three. It has forty key silicon rubber tactile. So uh, no tactile. At that point, they they picked up on the. The Portuguese proposal. The Portuguese one already, right? Mm -hmm. Fully integrated keyboard with multiple function keys. There's an nine volt power supply, a TV out connector to TV modulator, and a tape in out connector for interface with cassette. Okay, this is the specification. Yeah. Yes. Functional characteristics. There is one key depression for keyword commands. What we know, there are 22 defined graphic characters, which include space key. Very cool. This is so cool. A reading of the keyboard is accomplished by a combination of software and hardware. Eight address lines sequentially pulled low. If a key is depressed at the time, the corresponding address line is low. The appropriate one of the five keyboard outputs is pulled low. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Programming characteristics include TV channel selection is default to channel two. If the yeah. first key depressed is a three, the channel selection is changed to a three. Then they put afterwards, I think they put um um the switch at least in the in the US model you have a switch underneath the computer to, mm -mm. to the channel no we, we use two three uh oh uh, but I'll I'll show you I still have them yeah oh give me just one second yeah or this will fall I have a few here so this is the asmic so not this one just one sec I still have these machines to take to the museum uh, over here. So, ANTSC1. Come on. Am I dreaming? Is it I, only I, on the TS1000? It's only on the 1000. Oh, yeah. and it's it's on another one. On the... Um, you probably never saw one. The, the NTSC Spectrum that you find oh, in a, uh, Peru yeah. you know and what Chile. You you have a, a switch like that near the modulator. I've oh, but look one. at this. Look at this, David. Even though Do you want me to spotlight you? Let me just see. Oh, you. sorry. Uh even though the board doesn't have the switch. It's got the cutout. I had some I have some cases here that have the, the place. And this was not manually made. This is it's built the, into the mold. Yeah. yeah. And it's a NTSC case because the PAL one has the thing here. Oh, on a different spot. Okay. Yeah, uh, but the, this one has the small, um, the small uh, version of the board. Two RAM chips. Yeah. So okay. this one doesn't have it. Uh, this one is in a Spectrum case. So the two last ones. Give me just one second. Out of curiosity. Yay! No, another one. But it's only another one. I I, I thought I would have much more, but no. Another one, and this one as the place for the for the switch. Yeah. So, um, sorry. Oh, oh there's I, a there's a, a spot on the circuit board for the switch. Yeah, on this version there is. So I'll. Mm -hmm. show. But the problem is that so this case, ah, but wait, this is very strange. So this is a PAL, a PAL or UHF fifteen hundred. Okay. It's the one with the Ferranti Eula ULA. Oh, look at that. The ear, it's a place for a switch. 
yeah which fits perfectly in the case that location but it fits perfectly here so i see the the whole i know you you can it see lines it, up yeah yeah it lines up very well so you see my I finger can see the, I can, yeah i can see the solder holes through the through the yeah cutout. <laughs> so if it had a switch soldered underneath it, it would work, but it's on the Ferranti version. Crazy. But so, but you are right. So it's mostly on the, on the 1000. I didn't know that. Um, so glad, glad we spotted it. Just I want to, I want to call your attention to this second sentence on bullet okay. point number one. That as a result of this, a ROM based basic program should not contain a line number three. Yeah, that's hilarious. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm really curious about that. But you know, why? What what conflict that produces? What would happen because of this? Yeah, Be because of you pressing that specific key, right? But ROM based, it says, not yeah. you know, obviously not. You wouldn't have one loaded in RAM when you turn it up. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, but yeah. I think we have something to to that's play with. To try, yeah, yeah. Um, syntax error detection is automatic yeah. upon line entry, yeah. uh, which was uh, something that uh, was very important for the spectrum, and the one thousand didn't have, if I remember well. No, the the one thousand does that as well. That's a that's it does a it already. Yeah, yeah. The, and then, then it's uh, the ZX eighty that doesn't the have eighty. It. Does it? Ah, okay. Yep, eighty okay. does it as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's that single key entry. Feature okay. Part of that. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the syntax error detection because I remember something oh, they okay. changed in the spectrum. Something they changed between the versions. I I, I thought it was from the ZX81 to the spectrum, but I I don't know the ZX81 that well. I'm gonna have so to I think that only when you press run, it does a syntax check. What whereas the spectrum, when you press the enter key, it does a syntax check of your As... of your code. As you do it, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go back and check, check too. I, I'm pretty sure that, that that was something that came uh, after, but so it seems that in the 1500 they introduced it also. Uh, but we we can double check that. Yeah, yeah. But but this I know syntax error was something that evolved over time. Um, programming characteristics: D file is a fixed size. If RAM top is greater than this, yeah, that's that's a you know. <laughs> restriction no, of the, the, the k equals 1024 yeah. <laughs> so lower power consumption lower re radio frequency interference improved modulator increase hysteresis of taping automatic yeah. default selection for channel 2 okay rum rm replaces rum pack this remaps internal 16k rum when a rum pack is attached oh that's interesting because the conclusion that um you know a lot of folks in america came to you know in reading articles about this was that if you stuck a ram pack a 16k ram pack on the back of the 1500 the ram pack memory is the one that extended but in this case what, what it's, it's saying is that the the ram pack memory becomes the first 16k block and the internal memory becomes the next 16k block. Okay. Which is the exact opposite of what what folks of assume. what probably would would be expected but uh, Yeah. Yeah. But well, it's clever so because wondering... remember if you have something else on that interface that is providing the 16k you would allow it probably to to work as planned instead yeah. if you forced it to be only after the it, you you would make it incom incompatible with the 1000 yeah exactly yeah makes all okay. kinds of sense edge connector and peripherals 46 pin dual sides provided mm -hmm. i don't know if this is what eventually I, I became um I believe it's all the same as the the one thousand, but I'd have to do a line by line. Yeah, check. we can. You have access to the document, so we can. Yeah, check that. Yeah, it's actually in the back of the one thousand manual. If I recall. Okay, peripherals. You can use sixteen k for expanding well, to thirty two k. RAM RM. That's new. So it says active load to remap the RAM. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Timex printer. This mm -hmm. should be the twenty forty. 
for obtaining a hard copy printout. Yes. Timex modem <laughs> printer for the West Ridge one. Yes. Have it. you ever saw one with the Timex sticker? Uh no. Because no, we I, have them. I it was them very, all. very hard to get. Right. Eventually I got it from uh, Professor Alvaro Oliveira. So he had one. Uh it was the only one I ever saw. All the others are West Ridges uh, mm -hmm. that I have in the in the museum already. Um, okay, and the stringy floppy that we spoke last time also. <laughs> okay, hardware specification, internal components, ZATA, mm -hmm. the ROM, dynamic RAM, master yeah. integrated circuit. This is a semi custom logic circuit which controls display process. This is the SCLD, right? This is what we call the SCLD. Yes. Okay. So all of this, and this is the part that is funny because the, the thing about the Ferranti version, the Ferranti version is prior to this. Mm -hmm. So they launched it. But how, how did they launch the Ferranti version? In the same case, with the same rubber keys. It's like they didn't have time for that. It's like things were happening in parallel. Uh, yeah. Well, so is there any kind of a date code on that Ferranti board? Uh, we we I remember from our um, previous discussion. Yeah. What I remember is that looking at the date codes, we thought uh, it was the um, it was the oldest one. We we our conclusion was this seems to be the oldest one. Um, it's not this one. Give me just one. It's the last one. It's always the last one. It's this one, okay. Well, how about so, the date codes on the chips themselves, like what's the date code? Yeah, because the board on the back doesn't have a date code, like yeah. the some others that you you mentioned to me. So this is the sorry, I forget forget where the camera is. This is the back of the of the board of the PCB. Yeah. The front of it doesn't say anything. So what we have as dates here is. modulator as a sticker but doesn't say anything mm -hmm. the ula it's from 8248 okay so the the very tail end is 82 yeah the cpu is much older uh, more recent 8446 that's and the rom is an original sinclair research but i can't see a date it's 80 something i can't see a date there is one thing here which is the three ic's have uh, someone drawn a uh, arrow yeah. with um, with a pen, just marking something there, and it has the same symbol in the three of them. So it's not like we did any kind of repair to this machine recently. So at least the ULA, the Z80, and the ROM are all from the same time. How about the RAM chips? What the the RAM chips, eighty-three. Oh uh, no, this is another ship they use from Ferranti. I don't know what it is. 8308. Okay. The RAM ships. Um uh, 8217. Yeah, that would have been old. 8243. One of them was no, both of them are on the um, uh both of them are on the what's the word? The the place oh. to put them. They are not soldered directly on Sockets. the PCB. On socket, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um and the other um ICs here. They don't have a date code. Two of them are from Japan. The other one is a Ferranti. Okay. I never knew what this one is. I need to check because it says Ferranti ULA, but I I, I saw this before. So okay, the, so the nothing on the, on the ULA. You know, reasonably okay. You said it was eighty two forty eight, right? Yes, end okay. of the year of eighty two. So that would be uh, November. November, yeah. Yeah. Um, the date code on the Z eighty is. Too late. Yes. Relatively Probably speaking. was changed. Some, some Probably time. was changed at some point. So, um, but the RAM is also 8243 or 8217. Okay. So this is a computer from 82. Okay. Certainly. So this lines up with the memo that we're looking at in terms of, of you know, we Timex have done some work to try to um, take the 1000 hardware you know, that, that first we did it in a, you know, uh, 1000 format 
uh, you know, a square circuit board that would fit into a 1000 case. And then now we've done some rework to make it fit into the plastic case, uh, the, you know, the spectrum light case that Portugal proposed and to get the keyboard. And that would require also moving the, the connectors to line up with the matrix from, from the spectrum, right? Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of timeline, it makes perfect sense that that Yoli thing is clearly from November and Kim is now talking about, you know, here's our current spec. We're, we're gonna be doing some more. But so the and, question is, did they launch the version with ULA? So we no, just ended up with uh, two or three. That it didn't happened. come out until May. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So uh, they're May doing a lot of work to launch it in May or soon after. Um, so yeah, okay, very well. Yeah. Okay, okay, so let's go on with the with the document. Um, okay, power supply on mm -hmm. reset is sure. obtained by we're power. We're not going to give you a switch, and we're not going to give you a reset button. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that <laughs> memory. Um, okay, without the RAM pack, with the RAM pack, here is the, the thing. Yeah, the changes. RAM pack image, interesting. With M one active. Okay. At least I don't know what it is. Huh. Okay. Any they are the art of the mastership operation of display processing. So here you have the explanation for the SCLD thing. Set line counter reset. Oh, set line counter reset. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pixel line number of the character being displayed. Yeah, right, right. The number of PV lines, that's correct. Okay. It's a different number than the number of pixel lines. <laughs> Yep. <clears throat> wow. Zero to seven. Okay. The firmware is written in ZATA machine codes. Yeah. Oh, I sure would like to refer to the TS fifteen hundred ROM source code. <laughs> um performance yeah. specifications. Okay. Voltage power, nothing yeah. special. Yeah. Mechanical specification, they, they didn't fill we it in. Know. Or she didn't. Okay. Yeah. Environment specification. Okay. Now, Connect I think. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Number four. Let's talk about number four for a second. Connector fatigue. Connector test. fatigue uh -huh. test. <laughs> you take it out and put it. Test. Really? <laughs> yeah. Must work for six months. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this oh, this yeah. is Hilarious. this is our test to do in the in the production, not not software yes. tests or anything like that. Right. So in February, yep, they were saying that it complies already with FCC. Well, I think they're, they're saying that it, it has to. Yeah, probably it's for the future. Yeah. Product cost objective. Oh my god! This part normally is is obscene. <laughs> Product cost objective for fifteen hundred. In 83 economics at 15 uh, half a million pieces yeah 25 dollars a piece <laughs> wow they didn't so, put here what's the okay they didn't put it here but there are places where you can see this i remember there's nothing there else is. in this document sorry i regret to tell you that let's see what else power supply loading analysis on 18 yeah. so after the meeting Tom Bell Password, oh. Lugay with the veto, Kim Pasternostro also. Ah, uh, we saw something like this before. Yep, yep. It was her her, her hand calculations? Yeah, calculations. This makes sense. Yep, one hundred three amps. More than loading. And this is this is a, a hmm. this is a, a you know Some this was an issue the with the one thousand the power supply was you know kind of hard pressed to just run it and then when you put a 16k uh ram on it it would you know they cry. in you in uk they had to change it because originally it was uh, 0 0.7 uh, amps mm -hmm. and uh, they had to change it to 1.2 yeah and in portugal we found 
but I don't remember if, if it's for, I think it's for the ZX81. We found a version of the power supply that you don't find in UK, which is a one amp version. Mm. I, I have a few uh, of those. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but for the, not Timex for, uh, well, made by Timex, but with a case saying Sinclair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, very well, nothing here more. TS 1500 2000 oh, wow. wall mount AC adapter wall mount wow mm -hmm. look at that typo on the date <laughs> new document 21793 18, <laughs> yeah it's funny so this is yeah this is just the little what we call a wall board here in the US right yeah All right. right not to be reproduced i mean come on this is yeah. not this is not exactly. Uh, we are not reproducing. We are showing it's different. It is the intent of this project to describe mechanical electric performance in this commercial AC. Right. Okay. Yeah. The same power supply for both. Okay. For both. Interesting. All right. So then it would require higher. Well, but I don't know what was the official power supply. The, I think in Portugal for the 1500s, because I, I know the ones from US. I have a few from DVE, I think. They say yeah. DVE. Yeah. Um, but in Portugal, they are not like that. Uh, I think, I, I'm not sure. I think I have one boxed 1500, but I'm pretty sure it came with a Sinclair power supply with a ZX81. Well, and, and also, you know, I, I get that they're trying to have the same power supply, but what ended up happening happening is that the uh, yeah, the plug is different. Required a 15 volt power supply. Yeah, yours, but not ours. <laughs> so eventually they did this in Portugal yeah. because the power supply of the 2068 Portuguese one, the TC, is uh, the same as the Spectrum. Okay. Makes so, sense. but there is one thing they're forgetting, which is the, the plug is different. The, the 1500 is a three millimeters jack mm -hmm. and, uh, and the other one is a barrel uh, okay. plug. Yeah, yeah right. Another, another okay. there. The latest revision of all shall be part of specification. Okay, electrical, electrical. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty standard specifications for a linear temperature, power. humidity. Input plug shall be named a 115 configuration. Output yeah, good core, two <laughs> Cooper wire, black PVC insulated, well started. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Nothing here. Dumbbell pass. TS15. I, I like this word. Prototype. Prototype. Mm -hmm. er, February. Ernan. Here are some changes to the modulator as we discuss, although it might be good to point it in a memo for your reference. Old monolithic capacitor. That's uh, 0.01. Been... This is okay. a, point, a 0.01 microfarad. Uh, microfarad, yes. Yeah. 0.01 microfarad monolithic capacitor has been added from the top of... R6 to ground, okay. R6 to ground, yes. R5 and R3 have been changed from something, carbon... To carbon. 62. Okay. R4 has been changed from 10 ohms to 15. Ohms. Oh, has been changed. Okay. Okay. Still carbon. Yeah. About the mod to switch the trimmer from something in diode from pin 7 to pin 6. Okay. Another capacitor, ceramic, has been added. Yet. Omit R28 yeah, oh. replace C11. Okay, diodes are preferable to 1N4001 mm. as preferred to 1N4001. Mm. The TX7050 is preferable for Q Q2. Yeah, regarding items 9 to through 12 above. Something these parts are in stock or on order. I think they ought to on be order. ordered. Okay. 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 So we are make, making some changes. When yeah. is this dated from? Seven. We don't know. Oh, we know. February 7th. Yeah. Okay. 
So they still call it a prototype and they're making changes to it. Interesting. All right, this is the Dragovich final packing on February the 4th. Yeah. To Bill Skirm, right? Yep. It's Bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Vito yeah. Murphy one. Well, Argo Murphy was uh, uh, the marketing person. Okay. So my execution need to be started now. Please confirm integrity of the information and cut three success <laughs> requested. <laughs> they like the integrity of things a lot. Final um, build of materials the computer assumed dimensionally identical to a spectrum box. So they were coping things from the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. Length dual audio cable they're not providing. TV computer switch not being provided. That's a thing you use a lot in US. Yes. yes used yeah. to use. We we didn't supply it much here. Power supply, same part number as this. Yeah. Instruction manual. Dimensions number of pieces one or two. It ended up being one. Yeah. Yeah. Demo cartridge outside dimension. This this thing doesn't exist as far as I know. Right. Demo cartridge, demo tape. I wonder. Um, yeah. EPS. EPS is the polystyrene something. The what is EPS? I'm not sure. Well, result what, what, what's the foam? What's the name? Not foam, but the, the thing you oh, use. Oh, in... the expanded polystyrene. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. It's that one. We say shvev of it in Portuguese. It's totally <laughs> different. Uh, but okay. Outer yeah. box. Uh, text and line art schedules required. Margot Murphy. Yep. Okay, warranty card, service contract, would appreciate answer no later than this. And then another one from 31st of January. Let me just see the date of the first one, February oh, 4th. Back. Now, this is another one that is on the same scan. 31st of January. Yeah. The veto to Isaacs. Documentation brought back on 1500 computer program. Purchase requisition for conversion of top and bottom cover case tools. Revision B. from Rev B to C. It would be nice to be able to map them mm. what they are. Mm. Per chart with critical <laughs> milestones. I I don't see this since my since university. Man. Yeah, right. I, mean, <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> what is this? But I think I saw this in university. Yeah. Preliminary product specifications, preliminary product engineering, Rev A. Copy of blue pens that we are missing. Uh, existing 1000 and spectrum hmm. okay copy of keyboard layout qualified vendor list for components okay master ic ts oh there's a lot of papers still here yeah. ts 1500 new document tightened i series of taping input so this is something they were referring in the other one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. improving the, the okay. tape improving load. the tape yeah that was a big problem scope Neat. Integrated oh, wow. circle schematic drawing quality control. Well, what acceptance requirements? Here it is what you want. Yeah. Does all the magic. Yeah. Channel select control switching. That's hilarious. Okay. Uh, it's it's oh four five okay everything's yeah. here sheet three out of eleven okay functional description the pins you have ceramic oscillator requirements huh. <laughs> Murata Murata yeah wow oscillator must start within one second of power up with one with point one tolerance yeah right so until now this is something that for sure is documented already yeah. Yeah. Pin definition, continuation. Reset for the CPU, cool. Inverted clock output to edge connector for ZX81 compatibility. Huh. <laughs> channel select output, hello signal select channel three. Default is channel two. Okay. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Composite video output and cassette recorder output. Yeah, this is why you can't. Oh, okay. You have composite video output in the in the chip, of course, in the IC, mm -hmm. but then you you modulate it. Right, right. So this is why it doesn't when you when you save or load, it doesn't generate you know a, a proper TV signal anymore. You just get these black bands 
Um, okay. <clears throat> so it's it's using the same pin. The UL, this is the case on the ULA. It uses the same pin for video and for um, recording tapes. <laughs> yeah. Who, who, who thought about that? <laughs> uh, that would uh, that would definitely be a Clive Sinclair. We need to you know make it cheaper. <laughs> decision. One last pin. Okay. The pin. Um. Yeah, and his Sedaris is to reduce error from noise. That's good. Interesting. Continuation. Oh, nice. Yep. I regret to say there. we are Should still I... in February. Yeah. Okay, still the pins. Okay, what else? Yep. DC yeah. characteristics, now the voltage. Mm -hmm. CPU hmm. clock, the voltage. Mm hmm temperature you let us start static discharge we're about just over halfway through oh yeah nice and here is the the pinout nice diagram sk3 scope this document specifies is this a continuation no it's because the new document starts out on one yeah it's repeating oh yeah, okay. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's repeat. Okay. This is from the previous one. That we were looking at, yeah. Production cost objectives is also not filled in. Yeah. Memory, we had this already. So yeah. it's repeating here. Yeah. Performance in terms of voltage, no dimension. So, this yeah, this part is the same. Requirements, yeah. you see. So it's a little, little bit earlier. Okay. Cool. Two last ones. Integrated circuit phase lock August. oscillator. It's a crystal. August to uh August 83, 82, and then yeah. February 83. Three. Yeah. So this means is this specific of the 1500? Because that would mean they would be working on it already yeah, in no. August, which well, makes so sense. Take, yeah, right there. It says 1500. Yeah, modulator ICTS 1500. Yeah. Interesting. Phase lock oscillator for use on Timex computer. Okay. 60 megahertz. That's weird. 60. Oh, is no. it? Isn't it the am I mixing things up with the well 60 hertz is our yeah 60 hertz would make our, more sense yeah, because of the PAL like and the NTSC thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 60 hertz probably. Yeah, it might be a typo. No, no, but again, not, operation is 60 thing, megahertz. 60 megahertz. I wonder what the point is. Because that's not a multiple of any. And then you have a current of 10 milliamps. milliamps. Yeah. Yeah. So let's look at the pin configuration. Uh, y U U T. That's interesting. Okay. So on the bottom row, you see there's a. A U a V U V I. Yeah. Which is the type of video output, right? Color right. Mm -hmm. Color yeah. encoding. Yeah. RF out mod in. Uh okay. Scroll down a little bit. I'm curious to see if this is a this is not a chip that's ringing a bell for me. Approved vendors. Card number. EGM 504. Taipei, Taiwan. TA. Okay. Tony Sen, Juventa Lee. 330. Hong Kong. I wonder what part that is. Interesting. EGM 504. EGM 504. TA 227P. You have two guys providing the same thing. Yeah. You always we can call them and see if they still have it. <laughs> I'll call them up. Hey, can you kind of get one of those? <laughs> um, standard. But it looks some IC. So we're talking about 1500. We're talking about, let me see if there's any. Let me just open one out of the blue and see. No, this is the Ferranti. But this, this started in August. So let's look mm -hmm. at the Ferranti one. Mm hmm. 
this is an interesting there are two things here coming from japan but these are memories 4264 are memories the other one is ta227 227 no there's nothing with that name here no i don't remember seeing anything like that but wait we were seeing things about the the scld so let's look at one version with that No, TMS 1416 is memories. Then the ASIC, then some coils, the ROM, the processor, CPU. You don't have anything else. Oh, then you have the, the crystal, ESS4C. No. Mm -hmm. The crystal... The two pins of the crystal are connected to pins that we can recognize in the SCLD if needed. Yeah. No, I don't see anything here that helps me. Okay. Okay. Put it here. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's go on. Yeah. IC package PPL oscillator. TA227P oh. monolithic RF modulator. It's a That's modulator. That's exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> it's a modulator. But the modulator they use is from the same brand as always, Aztec. Aztec, yes. Yeah. There are there are a few with another brand of modulators, a blue one, a gray and blue modulator. I, I found them in some spectrum and some others. But look at this. It's yeah. a modulator, but then it's a uh, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there's a there's a um inside the modulator, you think? Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a chip from uh, Motorola that's in the 20 um 2068 that does a similar sort of thing. That's, that's... So you're saying that if I open the modulator, man, this one Might. is not easy. Okay. I... No, this one is the normal version, just with the transistors and things like that. Mm -hmm. The Aztec modulator? Yeah, the Aztec yeah. one. Probably with some another version. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So they were talking about Very well. actually using it. So different... going on to conclude this part at least. Can load in. I never heard of that. I pay. Yeah, okay. Very interesting that they were considering using a different modulator uh, device. I wonder why they... Yeah, but then they had the stock from the ZX81 and from the Spectrum and everything, so probably that was a reason not to change it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. FM section. Yeah, this is just talking about how it generates its uh, uh, the video signal from the inputs. Okay. Mm -hmm. all the specs exact size mm -hmm. exact size for a printed circuit board is shown below lots and lots of things yeah it's a that's a um an evaluation board yeah hmm. okay ends here interesting cool and Thank finally you. from february it's about it's master i c 11 pages deleted yeah. it's from uh where when was it oh well, there's a couple 24 days. february yeah and way before june documents started in june no january no 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 january sorry yeah. <laughs> you, you changed it <laughs> yeah january yeah yeah added so 10k on equivalent current source pool we know they made changes right you know uh because there was like what at least six iterations of of the scld that yep we have physical evidence of. Yeah. 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 So David, I think our time is uh, is done. So probably we can we can stop here and in the next episode go on. We are still in we just finished February of we're, 83. We're, yes. We're, uh, we're so there's the plenty of, of February 1983. <laughs> yeah. We're stuck in time. I think well, we need and, Marty McFly to go there and help us. And so it's it's three months from february to the product 
being launched, right? Which was May, uh, so February, March, April, yeah, May, three months. And actually less because it was mid-May and we've just completed February. So they're gonna have to ramp up their uh, efforts and speed to get this to the market. But you know, I don't know what they're taking to the market from the options they have, but you and I know that there's still a, an episode missing here, yeah. which is that thing about them trying to see who can perform some cost reduction and come up with a better design and things like that. But eventually, that may be after May. It doesn't mean it, was, it, it wasn't for the, the first uh, version or the batch initial, iteration. Yeah. So, but there's still plenty of things that will happen with the 1500 as we know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Another one done. Yes. Let's keep going. It's awesome. I'm loving it. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, Joao, we will chat again um, real soon. Uh, pick up in March when spring of 1983 <clears throat> comes to Portugal and Connecticut. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. All right. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.